be back here again with the Bible study. Uh, and this is a time of need. It is time when we're listening to, it's time for the shift. It's time for the, atmo at the atmospheric change spiritually within our society to today. It definitely is needed. Uh, our writer is certainly, is, I, I like his simplicity, how simple he can get so that we can understand the things that he is saying uh, that God is directing us and leading us. And I think today you bet, I want us to understand something that we're going to talk about, something special, two words. The first word is, uh, is anointing. The second word is abiding. Our subject, again, is part two of that chapter, uh, a customized GPS. And it's certainly sure, I wish Sister Glory <coughs> Gamma was here. She says of this of Monoma. One of my sister-in-law, that she is a human GPS. So this is this is this it's familiar of what we want to say to you today that you need to have this GPS, this customized G GPS inside of you. And this is what our writer is talking about today: uh, the anointing, the anointing. That's the first thing he says. I w we're going to be discussing First John chapter two. And we'll try to have the, our people to read those scriptures. When we send out our text to, for the Bible study, we send the scripture out. So those of you who, who are on the outside of our text, outside of our membership, uh, you listen to and read First John chapter 2, verse 20 to 27. John is such a great, great, good preacher, the beloved disciples of Jesus Christ. They said he laid in the bosom of Jesus. He was closest to him cousin, but yet more a student of the uh, teachings of Jesus Christ. And, and watch, watch what it says. If you got a customized GPS, it means you have a navigational system inside of you. Uh, if, if God is your navigational system uh, as, as a Christian, then we can think of two things, two different groups of people, maybe three. Number one is those who are saved and those who are not so saved. Uh, but the writer says something, that, uh, Dr. Evans says something about that. There's a third group who is saved people who got God's GPS inside of them, but they are not using it. They are not taking advantage of what that inside GPS, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, preacher? Well, this is what he leads us in talking about the anointing. And uh, some people make it sounds like the anointing sounds like only certain people can or qualify to have the anointing. But here we got to understand something that the anointing is a su supernatural guiding system that's placed within us to help steer and to guide us uh, in God's direction for the plan that he had for us. In 1 John 2 and 20, there's one of the scriptures that we'll, you'll see where God is referring to that anointing. What does the anointing mean, preacher? It means to have the Holy Ghost. It says, and, and how, what does it mean to have the Holy Ghost? It means that you are saved. Once you are saved, the Holy Ghost comes to live inside of you. Uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, in, in the Baptist faith, we said that they are, they are one and the same. But all three of them has a different duty, a different job. The Holy Ghost guides us. That's, that's who, who is our supernatural guidance system. When John speaks of the anointing, he is referring to the work of the Holy Ghost and the guidance in the life of a believer. Uh, second John, first John, I'm sorry, 2, 21 and 23. Uh, you read those scriptures as we flash it upon it, read on it. It says, and then to understand, to activate your anointing, you must be willing to identify with Jesus Christ and speak of him as the way the Father speaks of him. And then he says some different things. says that, watch what Jesus says. That, uh, you see what John is saying, who 
Who's, who is a liar? One that denies Christ. I want to pin a point there. The, uh, that not only the one who verbally denied Christ as the Savior, the Son of God, he is called the Antichrist. There is when you don't live your life as a believer that Jesus is the Son of God, that makes you also a, 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 an unbeliever. That makes you an Antichrist. Who so denied the Son? So whenever, whenever we don't follow his teaching, we are denying him. God and, the, God and the Son are one in the same. Jesus is saying something there that if you, if you believe in the Son, then if you believe in the Father, then you ought to believe in the Son. And if you believe in the Son, then you ought to believe in the Holy Ghost. And, and they, they work together. First John uh, 2, 1, 2 and 23 says so. But to activate your anointing, you must be willing to identify with Jesus Christ and speak of him as the way you speak of God. John was taking a shot at many of the Jewish uh, 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 religious, I'm sorry, Jewish believers of God. They believe in Jehovah, but they would not accept Jesus Christ as the son of Jehovah. Jesus says, if you ask in my name, it's the reason why he said that. It shall be done unto you. There's a lot of things. Matthew 10 and 30, 32, 33 <clears throat> talks about the relationship with the Father and the Son. It is, it is the jobs of the Holy Ghost. It's his job to lead us and guide us. It is his job. When, when he, it's in there. Uh, I think Sunday I was saying that the Holy Ghost leads you and pulls you to the Father when you are unsaved. It pulls you, and then you, with your belief, you become saved, and he comes and dwells with you. It is important to believe in God. But without the confession of Christ, the Holy Ghost doesn't activate the anointing, the guidance, the supernatural guidance that's in your life. When you refuse to do that, your spiritual GPS, y'all, uh, 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 you don't have access to the receiver of the heavenly broadcast network if you don't have the anointing. The anointing comes when Christ is glorified. You see where I'm going? I want you to follow me where I'm going with that. When you glorify Jesus, when you glorify Christ and believe in God, the Holy Ghost comes and gives you the anointing. The confession you make, if I believe in my heart, is that what it is? If I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, here we go. If I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, that Jesus is, is the Christ. He's the son of the living God, and he did die, and God did raise him from the, gra from the grave. That's the confession. That's the confession. You are confessing, and you are giving the recognition that Jesus is the Christ. Stop. At times, we call him Jesus, but we ought to call him Jesus Christ more because Jesus Christ means he is our Savior. Amen? <clears throat> if, you, if you're not listening to this system now, you can get yourself in trouble now. Remember that what's guiding, what God leads you may be different what he leads to, what he, how he leads somebody else. Amen? Uh, he gave David two different answers for one problem. God works in mysterious ways, y'all. 1 John 2 and 20 tells us that the anointing of the Holy Ghost <clears throat> happens so that we will know, that we will know. We are anointed, and you all know. That's what he says. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, it says that we receive the Spirit so that we may know the things freely given by God. The Bible is clear. The Holy Ghost's job is to anoint you and to activate you that, 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 that you might know what it is that God wants you to do in, in your life. What is God's plan? and how to achieve God's plan for your life. The goal of the Holy Spirit is to make God's will, his guidance, and his reality exponentially, experimentally in your life. His job is to make God's plan real to you in your life. In other words, you cannot serve God without the anointing, and you cannot have the anointing without being a believer 
And you cannot be a believer, okay, I'm circling around, unless the Holy Ghost pulls you to God. Amen? And once you are a believer, the Holy Ghost comes and lives in you and leads you and guides you in, his, in your life. And what he shows to you, he shows you things. I'm coming to that abide and stay right there. It, it shows you. Now, when we get, go ahead and read 2 Kings chapter 6, we find Elisha, Elisha and his servant. Where we find his servant, they, they were, they had a great army coming up against him, against Elisha. His servant was terrified, but Elisha saw something that his servant could not see. Watch what God asked him. God asked, uh, asked Elisha asked God, open his eyes so he can see. And when God opened his eyes, he looked behind the army. There was a great army of the angels all around him. That, that inspires me. I was looking for some inspiration from God. He said, son, you, see, you don't see what I see. He said, just take your time and let the anointing work in your life, the guidance of the Holy Ghost, and God will open your eyes to see something that I am greater than whatever you see in it, whatever situation in your life, whatever condition coming your way, I'm greater than that. Amen? He said, Elisha had the anointing so he could see that the things the servants could not see. Because he had the anointing. God, and here go the prophet of God, praying that the servant of the prophet receive the anointing so he can see what he see. And why we ought to pray. We ought to pray for people at times, especially when we see some people in a dire situation. And God is showing you something. Showing you, look, it's not as bad as it seems. And, but, but that person cannot see it, man. And God will show them. You ought to ask God to show them that it is not as bad as it looks. Amen? And how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? The, the, the anointing helps you see with spiritual sights so that you will know how to react in the circumstances of God. As a Christian, when you confess, confess Christ, we all have a personal GPS that's ready to show us exactly what God wants us to do. The question is, how do I know? There's a lot of questions in there that, that, that's, that's personal to you, that's familiar to you. How do you know? Uh, 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 how do you get this thing working? Consider the words of John that's repeated over and over again. Abide. Then I tell you that two words, anointing and abiding. He already told us that you can activate, activate your anointing through your identification as Jesus Christ. First John 2 and 24, and you, you find that God says, let, 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 look, 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 look. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. What he says is, let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which have you ye have heard from the beginning, shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son of God and in the Father. What you heard before, come on, come on, uh, 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 Brother King, if I did put it to you, you can jump to 27, 28. As for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you, need, you don't need for anybody to teach you. Watch this now, y'all. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is true, and is no lie, even as it had taught you, ye shall abide in him. I don't think I got have any more. And now, little children, here you go again. How many times you heard the word abide? You heard it three or four times already. Abide in him. That when he shall appear, we may have, what y'all, confidence, and then again, not be ashamed, before he's com he comes back again. Watch, watch, watch. Here we go. The Greek word, Pastor, you got to help me here. Well, I needed help. The Greek word for abiding is meno. Meno means to stay. And, and, and that's, doctor, doctor, uh, our teacher tells us that uh, uh, to stay in the, our language is to hang out. John is telling us to hang out with the son and with the Father, and when you do that, you are hanging out with the Holy Ghost. The anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. It sounds contradiction, because we ought to be taught by people. We got to come to a teaching. 
But that's just what, not what John is saying here. He, what John means here is once you have the anointing, you no longer need the wisdom of men who reject God, not the ones who are of God, not men and women of God, but those who reject God. You don't need their wisdom. Amen? We must abide. We must abide. We must, we must stay neutrally linked to God. So you, can, you, you, you don't, don't have to introduce or be introduced to fallible, which means limited, mistake-prone human wisdom that will cloud your connection. The problem in our society today, people don't, they, they broke away from the church. They broke away from the man and the woman of God. And now they're relying on wisdom that's not of God. Because these people are not of God. Amen? God loves, watch one of the biggest statements is saying God loves everybody. God loves, God loves everybody. He'll, he'll take you, uh, uh, God will take you just as you are. Watch these statements, two, two statements. He loves everybody. He'll take you as you are. Listen to what he says. If you're going to come to me, come on, y'all, <laughs> then you shall abide in me. Not only that, you will keep my commandments. You will live the way you should live in God's will. Amen? And God, yeah, God loves everybody. But, 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 but if you reject him, God can cast you into hell, into hell, and that still doesn't mean he don't love you. I, yes, I do. Amen? And still another thing is he will chastise you even if he do. Yes, he loves everybody. But you, when you come to him, there must be a Change. Come on, y'all. I got to step into some heavy stuff here, and I hope you can follow me. Now, watch this. If, as a believer, you are not seeing God's hand in your life, you don't have a, prob a power problem. You have an abiding problem. John 15 and 7 says so. It, you, you don't have a power. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's a double answer right here. Double answer. Double answer. How I'm doing. How, how, why I don't see the power of God moving, hand, God's hand moving in my life. It's not a power problem. Well, I don't have the power. No, it's an abiding problem. You are not abiding in the Lord, so you are not experiencing his power. Oh, I feel it now. I feel it now. But watch this, though. He says so that, 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 that you have to abide with him. You have an abiding problem. That's what he got. This verse makes it clear that the way you get your answered prayer is through connection. There is a second part to that, to that thing. If you want to get an answer, help me somebody, you got to connect to God to, and, and connect to his son. How you do that? You got to abide in Christ. It goes back to abiding, and, and, and in order to receive the abiding, you have to have the anointing. When you get the anointing, then comes the abiding, because the Holy Ghost keeps you in Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, uh, come, come on, let me, let, let's, let's go into some words, and let me see if I can take it. I'm going to take you out, five minutes, ten minutes, take you out. The key words explain how God's leading is made known in our lives. Hallelujah, we're still in abiding. Number one, revelation. Number two, illumination. Number three, confirmation. Number four, application. Number five, transformation. Amen? What, what, help, help me out. Revelation? Revelation is what God has revealed, and it comes in two forms. Why do you think the last book in the Bible is called the book of Revelation? That's God revealing to us what's going to happen. Amen? He, 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 he reveals to us. He, he, he shows us a picture. I, I, I like Bishop Brister. The first time I heard him preach, I left from there with, a, with a, 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 a description of this young preacher. I said, what makes him good, he draws a picture of the gospel. And, and, and he makes it plain where you could see it. And that's what made, makes the preaching, the gifts that God has given him so good. Amen? Now, so what happens? You get revelation. Two kinds of revelation. Number one, general revelation, which means all, which is revealed in God's nature. Amen? Secondly, secondly, general revelation, uh, 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 first, first there is, scientists study general revelation. 
even if some of them don't recognize what it is. Help me somebody. For example, Scripture tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. That's general revelation, Psalm 19 and 1. But then again, but, but that, that, and it also says that God has made himself known through nature. Amen? Re, uh, Psalm, Re, Romans 1 and 20. Now watch this now, y'all. It's simply put that through nature, sometimes when you see all of what, what, what the power of nature, and you say to yourself, it is uncontrollable. It's nothing that we could do to stop that when they talk about the storm coming and the, and, and the destruction of the storm. And, and we say to ourselves, there's nothing we can do. Amen? But there is one that can do that and control nature. When you look at the power of a storm, you think about the power of God. That's general re uh, revelation. Then there is specific or special revelation. It is not confined to creation. Amen? We find Special revelation through the Word of God. Amen? The inspired Word of God. Truth has been disclosed. This now. Uh, every question you ask has two answers. God's answer and everybody else's answer. Amen? When, when you have a question, I'm sorry, I don't jump pages. I'm sorry. The anointing when you receive it. I'm still, I'm, I got a little mixed up here. When you have a question... You have always assume revelation from God is 100% correct when you get it from God. Amen? Let's go to from revelation, we got to do this. This brings us to the next thing, illumination. Illumination means to make something visible. Illumination is designed for you to understand and see the manifestation of what was said. Manifestation means to show. Amen? So you got revelation, and now you got illumination. The Bible tells us what it says. The Holy Spirit takes what it said and creates a picture in your mind, a thought in your mind, a desire in your mind. That's illumination. You read and study the revelation, and then the Holy Ghost takes the revelation and illuminates it, makes a picture out of it, and gives it meaning and relevancy. Amen. Paul talks about this thing. But if you start with revelation and you have your guidance system turned on, that means listening to the Holy Ghost, you will begin to experience illumination or transformation of the mind. Amen? It, it, it's, it's time after revelation and illumination, we got to turn to the third thing, which is confirmation. Amen? The Bible says, Scripture teaches us that two or three witnesses is a matter of confirmation. Amen? Confirmation happens when God does something outside of you mm, that connects with what he is saying inside of you. In other words, he does something completely outside of your control that validates the illumination. Once the Holy Ghost takes revelation, what you read, and lights it up, illumination, then it's time for confirmation. Confirmation can take a million different forms. Confirmation, you know, I heard you, I heard you. I'm, let me see if I can help you. I heard you, you said, somebody said something to you. You said, oh, that's confirmation. You saw something, a thing. Oh, that's confirmation. Come on, y'all. So uh, uh, you hear a song on the radio, that's confirmation. He knew something simple, hallelujah, to make, it, to make it easier for you to understand. Once the Holy Ghost confirms your illumination, it's time for you to act on it. Here we go. Revelation. Illumination, light it up, and then you got confirmation. So once you got confirmation, there is one another thing you got to do, application. Amen? It's time to make an application of the revelation that was illuminated for which you already have received a confirmation. Y'all, follow me, follow me. Can I, can, let, me, let me give you the example he gave to me. Amen? A young lady, a young wife. You didn't say a young lady. He said a young wife thinks she's pregnant. Or she does. She goes to the drugstore. She gets a pregnancy test. She takes the test, and the test says that she is pregnant. That's revelation. The test reveals her pregnancy to her. That's revelation. 
Next thing she'll do, she goes to the doctor. The nurse does a sonogram. The sonogram is illumination. It, 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 it come on, y'all. It lights the picture, picture it, uh, that would already have been re revealed to her. But every parent knows simply knowing you pregnant is different from seeing the baby in the room. In the womb. That's when sonogram come in. Amen? So you go to the nurse who is on the outside of you. Help me, y'all. The nurse confirms the pregnancy, help me, y'all, that reveals the sonogram and illuminated. The nurse confirms the sign that someone completely separated from you. Finally, the woman has the opportunity to make the application and prepare to bring the child into the world. Amen? As soon as she saw the sonogram. And then now it's time for her to apply the fact that she is pregnant. Amen? You and I make a decision every day. But when you start using revelation to inform your application, you can bet that you will start experiencing the last one, transformation. Amen? I hope y'all got that. Just read it and read it again. Read it again. Once God show you that he can talk to you, lead you, guide you, direct you, and govern you, you are never going back to being the same Christian who was on cruise to control. Because something happened to you. There is transformation. I met Brother Green and I work in transportation. And, 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 but while we was in transportation, there was a transformation happened with us, and we changed from being sinners to being a Christian. Amen? Now, we still in the same place, transportation. Transport means to move from one place to another. Transformation means to stay in the same place, but something happened. I'm not the same person no more. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. I, I, that was a transforming. <laughs> help me, y'all. Let me, let, let, let me make you understand. I'm going to close it out. Make you understand what happened when Jesus went on the, the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm bringing another word for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. Jesus was not transported because he was standing on the mountain. And then when the, when the prophet and the priest came and talked to him, the Bible says he had a transfiguration. What happened is he's, he stayed in the same place. Help me, y'all. But his figure changed because, because, because the, the Peter and them said they saw a brightness about him. He was different. In other words, he, he, stepped, whoa. he stepped into another world without ever moving. Come on, y'all. <laughs> he did not move, but he had to change his figure in order to get into that other world because, the, because Elijah and Moses, I think it was, was in another world. Amen? But in other words, he was transformed. Come on, y'all. He was transformed into a another figure. And then when as soon as it was over with, he came back. Help me, y'all. He never moved. He stayed in that one place. One place, so he was not a trans. He was not transported. Come on, Star Trek. Tr Star Trek will transport you. Help me, y'all, to put you in another place. But he was never transported. He was transfigured, and he was transformed. Amen. He, he was transformed. Uh, uh, back it up, preacher. He was transfigured, but he was not transformed because he ain't never changed. Transfig transform means to change. Amen. Jesus ain't had to change. We got to change. Amen? So, so, so when you got all of this, the best news that if you accept Jesus Christ, you already have the anointing. Oh, everything's in place. Your GPS is running. Since you got the revelation, see if I can remember all of them. Since you got the revelation and you got the, come on, y'all, the illumination, you got the confirmation, you got the application, and you've been transformed in the transfiguration. Help me, somebody. And then here comes, you might as well start doing this. Start your abiding. Start drawing closer to God so that he can begin living from the vantage point of a heavenly from a heavenly informed perspective. Amen, somebody? The GPS part two, you can't miss it. The anointing and the abiding. Amen? And watch these words. All of these things happen to you already. Since you're at the point of transformation, come on, you ought to walk into the abiding. 
So what you start with the anointing and then with all this stuff, revelation, illumination, confirmation, all this coming in, transformation, just coming in and application. Help me somebody. All this just step into your life. And then it is then that you start abiding in Christ. And Jesus said this, I'm going to give you a blessing if you abide in me. Those that abide in me, if you ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. That's a, that's a connection. That's, that's fabulous. That's, that's great. That's, that's beautiful. And I don't know what part it is you own. Oh, maybe you're at the beginning. And maybe you're at the point looking for confirmation. Well, I got to stop by and tell you, I'm going to give you confirmation now. If you believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you shall be saved that Jesus, God raised Jesus from the grave. You say you in you in transformation now. You are changing, and then when you get to heaven, the completion of your transformation will be then. Then you're gonna be like Jesus, transfigurated. Amen. Gracious Master, we thank you and we bless you for those words. Thank you for seeing, for letting us see. Lord, we are praying for the anointing that we may be able to see, Lord, and be a see your word and apply it in our lives so it can cause us to transform and cause us to abide in Christ. Lord, have mercy. And boy, things are just going to start changing in our lives. We don't have no business being discouraged. All we have to do is just abide in you. Just lay in you. Just stay in you. Just be with you. And all of this stuff going to start coming our way. God, we thank you and we bless you. Bless those who are listening to this word and those who came in person to listen to this word. In Jesus' name, amen.